Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to episode 12 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase weekly updates. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week at Starbase, work continued on the Can Crusher which has received considerable attention over the past month. At the build site, the steel box, whose purpose still remains a mystery, appears to be nearing completion as crews set to work painting it white. Friday evening, some testing was observed in the form of venting from below the booster quick disconnect on the orbital launch mount. Over the weekend, methane deliveries continued at the orbital tank farm ahead of the upcoming testing campaign. On Sunday, Doug towed a short fall of Gravitas back into Port Canaveral with Falcon 9 booster B-1052 following the successful Starlink 4-18 launch. At Starbase on Monday, multiple steel plates, which are part of the clamping mechanism, were lifted to the workers waiting on the can crusher. Later that day, work began on some new fencing at the D2 gate across from the Rover 2 and VR cameras. Meanwhile, as a truck carrying the rear hood of the booster quick disconnect was backing up, a sudden stop resulted in the hood slamming down on the flatbed. Apparently, no real damage was done as just a few hours later, a crane lifted the rear hood into place on the launch mount. At the build site, work continued on the Star Factory as steel, insulation, and external cladding installation maintained a rapid pace. Early Tuesday morning, we were treated to a spectacular show as storms rolled through the area. Wednesday afternoon in Florida, Gator Cam caught the Falcon 9 launch of the Transporter 5 mission from Launch Complex 40. The rideshare mission delivered 59 payloads into space. Meanwhile, at Starbase, crews worked to prepare the ground at the entrance of the launch site for the upcoming arrival of Ship 24. The rear hood of the booster QD was removed, likely to allow the attachment flange to be fully welded into place. Thursday morning, crews laid steel platforms across the launch site gate in final preparation for Ship 24. Meanwhile, Ship 24 rolled out of high bay and began its journey to the launch site. Let's watch as SpaceX's new Starship rolls down Highway 4. As the ship pulled up to the cryo station, crews quickly got to work removing the transport adapter. With the adapter out of the way, Ship 24 was shifted into proper alignment with the cryo station. Next, the newly assembled quick disconnect was extended and connected to the Starship for the first time. That afternoon, B-8's partial LOX tank section was removed from the turntable in the high bay. From the newly upgraded rover cam rig, we can see the prefabricated office building being removed at the top of the electrical bunker at the orbital tank farm. The building sections were driven up the road and reassembled near the suborbital tank farm. Later that afternoon, venting was seen coming from Ship 24 for the first time, showing a good connection at the QD. A short time later, SpaceX's LR11000 crane carried the booster load spreader from the launch mount to the landing pad. Also this week, we have a flyover update from Cape Canaveral, brought to you by Greg Scott. Here we can see the Vehicle Assembly Building, where the SLS is currently awaiting its next rollout, and Pad 39A, where SpaceX launches its Falcon 9 missions, including all the Crew Dragon missions. This is also the launch site where SpaceX is building the infrastructure to launch Starships in the near future. On the right here is the Falcon 9 Horizontal Integration Facility. On the left is the Falcon 9 launch tower with a crew access arm. As we look closer, we can start to see the beginnings of the Starship infrastructure. Just to the left of the red crane, you can see the first three legs for the launch mount. These legs appear to be taller than the legs we initially saw at Starbase, which may indicate that these legs will connect directly to the bottom of the launch ring without the vertical extensions of the first launch mount. Just to the left of the launch mount, you can see the rebar that has been put into place for the concrete base of the launch tower. Just a few miles south of Pad 39A is SpaceX's Roberts Road facility. 
We can see that crews are nearly finished with the additions to Hangar X, where SpaceX refurbishes their Falcon 9 boosters. The new addition includes a north-facing wall of windows which should allow for some spectacular launch viewing. Next to Hangar X, workers have been rapidly assembling the sections of the orbital launch tower. On the left are the first, second, fifth, third, and fourth sections of the tower. Structurally, they appear to be substantially complete. On the right, another section is well on its way to joining the others. On the right side of this image, you can see some of the prefabricated sections of cryogenic piping. It seems likely that this piping will be installed in the first five tower sections prior to the final stacking of the tower. This should allow for a quicker assembly process at the still active LC-39A. Also on the right side, you can see the rebar sticking out of the ground that is part of the foundation for the first of an expected two mega bays. To the east of the tower assembly area and the mega bay, crews are also working on the foundations of SpaceX's Cape Canaveral Star Factory, where assembly of the new starships and super heavies will begin. Here we can see the Blue Origin facilities at Launch Complex 36, where they plan to launch the new Glenn rocket as early as next year. Northwest of the launch complex near the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex is the Blue Origin Rocket Factory. Blue Origin facilities are also undergoing expansion currently. Here you can see that crews have cleared space for a new manufacturing and support building. Work is also progressing rapidly on the 2CAT test area which will be used for New Glenn's second stages. And there you have it, another SpaceX Starbase Weekly Update with a splash of Blue Origin brought to you by Lab Padre. If you like these new updates, please subscribe and hit the alert bell for new video notifications. For those of you in the U.S., we wish you a safe and happy Memorial Day weekend. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, 